Crap, 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 I'm late, I'm late! Just please make it on time! <laughs> no, I was too late! Calm down, what's going on, Retro? I was so caught up in a Sonic Reviews that, that I missed out on a chance to make a joke! It was gonna involve you blooming while screaming in agony! Wait, what? Guess I'll have to do it next time! Hold on a sec. But he was already making already preparations, preparations for the next expiration. All right, then. Pikmin. It's an interesting one, all right. This game was inspired by Mario 128 or Mario 128. Mario 128, a tech demo for the Nintendo GameCube, showing off 128 individual AIs doing various tasks. The game was also going to be called Adam and Eve, where you'd play as some sort of guard, manipulate their lives, and watch them grow into a village. No apple tree though. Huh. Anyway, this... somehow... turned into Pikmin. The game was developed by Hiroshi Kamiura, and I'm pretty sure that's not even pronounced right, and Jigeru Miyamoto. Yes, this is another one of Miyamoto Bike's children. Welcome to the family. I guess I can tell you my history with this game. My first exposure to this game was from the trailer on Luigi's Mansion and my cousin actually had it. I didn't think much of it and while I did miss out on the first game, I did eventually pick it up and when I finished the game, I fell in love with it. Heck, it's a bit of a reason why I named my channel after the game. Pikmin was then released for the GameCube on the 26th of October 2001 in Japan, the 3rd of December 2001 in North America, and the 14th of June 2002 in Europe. So, is this game about plants any good? Well, my guts tell me we should take a look. The story starts with Captain- Oh boy, I misspelled Alamar wrong. <laughs> the story starts with Captain Alamar taking a flight in his spaceship, the SS Dolphin. Ha! I get it, because the GameCube was anyway. His ship runs into an asteroid, causing it to crash land onto an unknown planet with all of his ship pieces scattered across the planet. When he awakes, he finds out about his ship in... mediocre condition. But not only that, the planet is full of oxygen, which is deadly to his people, and his life support system will only last him 30 days. What a terrible turn of events. Pikmin, a teleport turn of events, by the audiobook Amazon. Ah! After a bit of wandering around with a very zoomed in camera, we find a strange... tin, which Olimar calls an onion, that spits out a seed, which grows into a plant. After plucking said plant, because why not, we meet the creature he calls a Pikmin. Apparently based on his favorite food, Pik Pik carrots. After feeding the onion some food pellets, which causes it to shoot out more Pikmin, That's right, they multiply! Olimar comes across his ship's engine, and with the help of the Pikmin, brings it back to his ship, letting him leave the area. From here on out, you and the Pikmin, who decides to help you because... You and the Pikmin must find the rest of the pieces before 30 days is up. Short and a bit dark for the Nintendo game. I mean, 30 days to escape or you DIE?! It's good, don't get me wrong. It's just... DIE?! But of course, you didn't come here just to DIE?! I swear that's the last time I'm saying that. Yeah, let's move on to the gameplay. There are three types of Pikmin. There's the red Pikmin that are the strongest and can withstand fire. The yellow Pikmin can be thrown higher and pick up explosive bomb rocks. And the blue Pikmin can breathe on the water. The main objective of the game is to search for a piece of the ship. Kinda like Toe and L. He even crashes like L. To do this, you will need to gather a certain amount of Pikmin and let them carry it back to the ship. This won't be easy because there are enemies everywhere and they're hungry for some Pik Pik looking Pikmin Super D Karate. To defeat the enemies, you must chuck the little guys at them until they're dead. You must also be careful how you approach the enemies as if you're not careful, they will gobble them up. No matter how old I get, this will never be any less terrifying. There are also various ways you must approach the enemies like watch out because they breathe fire or don't let them squash your Pikmin. Also, once they're dead, you can just bring their corpses back to the onion and make more Pikmin. Just... 
What? You want to talk about terrifying? Let's talk about the bosses. There are three bosses in the game. The first one, the Burning Snare Grit, is located in the Forest of Hope. It's a snake-like hybrid that will come out of the ground and gobble out your Pikmin. The second one, located in the Forest Nable, gave me a scare when I first played it. You have your group of Pikmin and you blast down the wall and you see nothing. You see that there's a ship part in the area, so you walk in and the music changes, but still nothing. Go a little further, and boom! Beady Wombax just comes out of nowhere and squares some of my Pikmin. Who and why programmed that? <coughs> I'm sorry. That really scarred me ever since. And finally, we have the Emperor of Ball Blacks, located in the final trial. And he is the worst. So far, with any other creatures that eat Pikmin, they don't take much. But with him, he has no Pikmin limit. And he will gobble up and squish all of your Pikmin if you're not careful. What's really cool about these bosses is that they're not really treated as bosses, as they are just bigger enemies, apart from the Emperor Bull Blocks. At the end of each day, all of my writes a log entry detailing what happened that day, what creatures he knows, or just remembering his family back on playing Hokotet. It's little details like that that I just really love. Not entire cutscenes dedicated to a character's development or anything, but little pieces showing off what our boy Olimar is like. Despite being trapped on an unknown planet with little time on his hands, he's still eager to study life on the planet with his main motivation being his family and man, he must have one great family. Apart from that one dialogue when he just lost all hope and everything went south. I swear it comes out of nowhere. Oh yeah, at the end of each day, Alamar has to leave the planet's surface for the night as all of the enemies will come out at night. So before the day ends, you must gather up all of your Pikmin because any Pikmin not with you or the ship and onions will be eaten. And man do I feel guilty when that happens. Come on, come on, come on. Oh crap, the, the countdown. I'm gonna make it. I'm gonna make it. I'm gonna make it. I didn't make it. And that's pretty much the game in a nutshell. In each in-game day, you must find the ship's pieces, grow more Pikmin since the more you have, the better. Defeat any enemies in your path, with care, build bridges, destroy walls, and take over the world. Oh, no wait, no. You, you don't, you can't, you can't, you can't do that, no. It's all about strategy. You could use all of your Pikmin to focus on a bridge, but you can also have some Pikmin to do other tasks, and in turn, save time. It's pretty hard since you can't be in two places at once, but if you want to survive, you might as well do it. Luckily, making the ship part of my main priority made the journey a lot quicker. You can even find nectar for the Pikmin to drink, turning their heads into flowers which will make them faster and stronger. And you can also leave them planted in the ground and wait till they grow from a leaf, to a bud, and then a flower. I didn't have any other place to put this. However, if I have to say one thing that sucks, apart from losing your Pikmin, that's, that's, that pain will never go away. The Pikmin themselves? They're kinda dumb. Sometimes they will just do something without your command. That's how I lost this little guy. They will fall into the water just like that, and as you're trying to whistle them out, more Pikmin will fall in and just- Oh, it's annoying. And try going over a bridge with a whole group of them because it's too big and someone's gonna fall in and not even using the sea stick will be any help. Didn't your teacher ever tell you to form a straight line? And some of them will even trip. Just, who thought that would be a good idea? And no, I will not make a brawl joke because that'll be too obvious, so... I had enough sonic forces in my life for one day? It's the best I got. The controls are not the greatest either. The analog stick moves both you and the cursor, meaning that throwing your pigment is more of a chore than anything, and I just end up using the C-stick half the time, unless necessary. Other than that, it's pretty good. The sea stick is useful for some things like if you need to put pigment on some stuff right away or swarming a creature. Once you get enough ship parts, you'll go to the final trial where the last remaining piece rests. And honestly, it's a pretty good test of your skills using each type of pigment. And then you meet the Emperor Bulblax. And like Pigment 404 said, It's 442. This guy is no joke. He can wipe out your entire army in a single attack by either eating them or doing a ground pound. Miyamoto Bike was right, this is the next Mario. 
but it's pretty easy if you plan carefully. Sacrifice a yellow pigment hold and a rock bomb. He gets stunned, attack, and then call them back before he wipes them out. Rinse and repeat. And after all of that effort, what do we get? A piggy bank. Well, I guess that makes sense. So, after fixing your ship, the Pikmin waves you goodbye. Aww. And then you fly away, ending the game. And actually, speaking of the piggy bank, there are multiple endings to this game. Turns out that five of those ship pieces are optional. If you only collect the required pieces and reach 30 days, he just kinda leaves without saying goodbye. Hmm. Huh. But if you don't collect the required pieces and reach 30 days, he does the same, only... It doesn't quite work. And then the pigment for some reason brings the corpse of Olimar to the onion and turns him into a pigment sea. What? And after that, you get your high score, encouraging you to play the game again. I like that. Also, once you beat the game, you unlock a challenge mode where the goal is to make as many pigment as possible within the day. I like this one too. But without a doubt, the best highlight of this game is the presentation. Holy Scooby Dooby Doo, does this game look so cute! The pigment, mm, the lifeless faces, the noise it makes. Whoever did recording for those sound effects needs a serious phrase. Oh, and the rest of the game looks great too. Especially like how huge everything looks compared to Olimar, with the idea that he's about the same size as a thumb. In fact, the whole world kind of looks a bit familiar. Yeah. Could it be? Nah. And the music is alright. Nothing too special, but it gets the job done. Apart from the intro. Seriously, what a movie. And that's Pikmin. What do we think of it? I think it's pretty good. While there are frustrating moments like that one part where you have to use those stupid flower tinnies to turn the pigment from one type to another and it's just... Who thought it was a good idea? Regardless, I really enjoyed my playthrough with this game. It's very short so there's some replayability. The gameplay itself is interesting and quite addicting at times. The Pikmin charm is all over the place. Dear lord, I want a pet Pikmin. And overall, a good game. While it is fun, there are some rough parts like the tripping and waiting for the sprouts to pop up. Luckily, both was approved in the sequel. Overall, I'm glad I discovered this game and its series. Now, if only we can get word for Pikmin 4. What about Hey Pikmin? I only see it as a 2D spin-off. If you want the best version of Pikmin, I highly suggest a version on the Wii. It's essentially the same with some minor differences. For one, it's in widescreen. That's always nice. You can select which pigment type to hold with just two buttons. That was something the GameCube really needed. But most of all, the controls are so much better with the cursor being controlled using a Wii Remote sensor, so you have much more position. The pigment can be lined up a lot better too. It definitely helps out a lot more. Plus, you can go back in time in case you had a major pigment loss or a piece of the ship that glitches out and falls into the abyss. So, do I think you should get it? Well, if you don't like the idea of multitasking and having to deal with a time limit, maybe not, but it's most certainly worth a shot. After all, I like it, and I'm terrible at organizing stuff like, where did my pizza go? I'ma go and look for it, I'll see you around. So, is no one going to pluck me? Am I going to be stuck here? Hello? Oh, hey guys, I didn't see you there. Welcome to the end card. It is here where I tell you to watch another video while advertising my other social media such as <clears throat> Twitter, Patreon, and Instagram because I kind of Actually, why did I make an Instagram account? Moving on. And possibly any other social media I might do in the future. You never know what the future holds. This is also the part where I tell you to like, comment, and subscribe. Share with everyone you know and love, and everyone you don't love. Because if you hate them, and if you hate my videos, make them suffer by making them watch my videos. Who knows? They might even subscribe. 
and then they'll get the revenge on you! <laughs> oh yeah, and thanks for Pikmin442 for the collab. That was, that was pretty fun. Nothing else to say, get out of here.